Hello, my name is Sarah Clear. I'm from the Rediscovery Centre and today we're, I'm going to be doing a workshop for Mead Libraries. And today the workshop we're going to do is Creative Waste Reuse. So first of all, just going to talk a little bit, what is waste? So waste is basically something that we don't want anymore and want to get rid of. But it doesn't mean we always have to throw it in the bin. What we definitely shouldn't do though is throw it on the ground or throw it somewhere it shouldn't be because that's obviously litter. Excellent. So we should always put stuff uh, into the bin if we definitely want to get rid of it. So which bin should we put stuff into? There's actually four different places we can put waste into. So here I have recycling centres. This is where you might go with your mom or your dad or your guardian and bring stuff to. So I'll put it there. Then we've got our recycling bin. So sometimes this might be a green bin. And then we've got our compost bin or food waste bin, people call that sometimes. And then we've got our general waste, okay? So if I put all these on the table and then I've got a couple of cards here and we're gonna think about which bin we should put stuff into. So if we're talking about old batteries, where should we put those to? They definitely should not go into our food waste bin, we all know that, should actually go to the recycling centre. Then if we're talking about things like newspapers, where should we put newspapers into? We should put those into our recycling bin. If we're talking about things like shampoo bottles, where should they go to? Not general waste, but into our recycling bin as well. If we look at something then like gone off meat or scraps of food, what bin should those go into? Our compost bin. Um, banana skins. Banana skins as well can go into our compost bin. Um, if we're looking at something like crisp packets. Now this can be something people are very unsure of, but crisp packets actually cannot be recycled. They have to go into our general waste bin. So what you can do at home is you can make a little game out of this. You can draw some pictures of different types of waste. You can do it with your siblings, do it with your parents, do it with people on Zoom as well. Make a little game out of this as well and see if people can guess all the right answers. If you're looking for the correct information, if you're not sure where should, stuff should go into, if you have a look at mywaste.ie, you can put in any type of waste into the search and it'll tell you where it should go to and what actually happens to it afterwards as well. Another great thing you could do at home is actually make posters and put those beside the bins to make sure everyone's using their bins correctly. So there's a little idea for home. So I'm going to clear all these up very quickly. And then, so when we put stuff into our bins, they all go different places. But what actually, how long do these things take to rot away completely? That's another thing we're never, we're a bit unsure of. So if we're talking about something like an apple core, how long do we think it would take for an apple core to rot away if we threw it into general waste and it ended up in the landfill? It actually takes two months for an apple core to rot away completely. If we're talking about something like plastic bottles, so something like a ketchup bottle, if we're very old and we don't wash it out and put it in the recycle bin, which is what we should do, if instead we put it into the general waste bin, the bin men collect it, bring it to the landfill, and then if it lies there, how long do you think it'll lie there before it rots away? It's way longer than you might think. It's 450 years, which is an incredibly long time. Um, if we're talking about an aluminium can, so an aluminium drink can, how long do you think that might take to rot away in landfill? You'd be surprised. It actually takes 80 to 200 years for a can to rot away. And then if we're talking about something else like bubble gum, now you might think bubble gum should go into the food waste bin. Unfortunately not, it needs to go into your general waste bin and it will never, ever, ever run away. So if you throw it as litter on the ground, it will lie there forever. Ugh, absolutely disgusting. 
So you, again, you can make this into a really nice little game. You could do something like a poster and write down how long it takes for different things to rot away. You could use a piece of string with some um, clips as well, and you can actually make your own timeline as well of how long things might take to rot away. So there you go, that's how long things take to rot away. So we definitely should be really thinking about what kind of things we're doing with our waste. And I think you all know the phrase, reduce, reuse, recycle. I'm gonna talk tiny bit about reduce. So reducing means making less waste in the first place. So it's things like instead of using a, a paper cup that you might get from your takeaway or you might have them at home as well, if you use one of these every day for a year, you're actually creating 10 kilograms of waste. It's a huge amount and a lot of them actually cannot, um, they take a really long time to decompose because there's bits of plastic in it as well and it can't be recycled. But if you use something like this, so a takeaway cup, you're only going to be using one of these. You can use the same cup then for 10, 20, 30 years, depending on what type of cup it is. So this is going to make a lot less waste as well. Really good idea. When we're going shopping as well, and you're asking your parents about different things, I want you to have a think about how much packaging there is around that different material. So if you're buying a family size box of cereal, and I've got one here. This is how much packaging there is around it. We've got the cardboard, which can be recycled, and then we've got the soft plastic, which cannot be recycled. So only half of this can actually be recycled. So that's a family size box of cereal. But if we're using something, if you ask your parents instead for multi-packs, do you think there's gonna be more packaging or less packaging? Let's have a look. So first of all, you've got the packaging keeping all the little boxes together. Then you've got all the soft plastic around each one of the little boxes inside it. Then you've got all the cardboard, sorry, I'll just turn this around. Then you've got all the cardboard. So in total, same amount of cereal, this is how much packaging there actually is. So same way the cereal, but because it's packaged differently, all of this is what you're going to be throwing away, which is a huge amount. So really think about it. Make sure you're not buying things with excess packaging like this one as well. Really wasteful, isn't it? Because the first thing you do is take off all that packaging and put it into the bin. So that's reducing the amount of waste that we're making. Reusing means taking things and instead of throwing them away, it's making them into something useful. So I've got a couple of examples here. So this is a lunch bag that you can use for your school lunch when we're back at school, or you can use for picnics and things. And it's actually made from uh, drink packaging. So they're basically cleaned out really well and then sewn all together, made into really nice uh, lunch bags. Or you can make something like this. So this is a coaster that you put drinks and things on and it's made out of rolled up magazines. So the next time you're about to throw something away, have a look at it. Could you make something really useful? Could you get some ideas online as well? And in a little bit, I'm gonna be showing you some cool stuff that we can actually make from things that we might have thrown away. So that is reuse and then recycling. What that actually means is we put things into our recycling bin, the bin when collected, they bring it to a big, huge recycling center then it's sorted into different types of waste, sent to factories and made into new things. So I've got a couple of things here to show you. This pencil case here is actually made from recycled car tires. And that's what recycling means. It means making it something completely new. What happens to some of the plastic bottles that we use as well? So you have your plastic bottle of water, drink it all, then you wash it out, let it dry, put it in your recycle bin. Bin men collect it, bring it to the recycling centre. Then at the recycling centre, they put it with the same sorts of waste. Then they put it into a huge big machine, which crushes it down into these small little bits. So this is basically small little bits of plastic bottle. Then they send it to factories. And then some of the factories, they put it into another huge machine, which heats it up. And when it comes out, it's these long stringy little bits this is basically melted down plastic bottles. 
then they can sew it all together and create something like this. So this fleece jacket was made from 25 plastic bottles. That's what recycling actually means. Brilliant stuff. So as I said, we should always really think about things before we throw them away because there's lots of useful things we can uh, make, particularly when we're stuck at home a little bit and want to get a bit more creative. So I've got some really cool ideas over here, so things I'm going to show you now. So the first one I'm going to show you is what you can do with any cardboard that you might have and also toilet rolls or kitchen rolls. If you're using toilet rolls, just make sure to wash your hands before and after using these as well. And you need a scissors and glue and something like a paintbrush or a glue spreader as well. So what you're gonna do here with this is you're gonna cut up your kitchen roll into small little bits. You can measure them out as well to make sure they're exactly the same width. You make them into little shapes like this and you can use lots of paint and decorate them. You can decorate the sideboard, uh, the backboard here. You can decorate all these as well, paint them different colours, use whatever you'd like and you can create them into different shapes as well. So this is basically what you do. Really nice just to put together. You can create them into lots of different shapes, you can roll them up as well and you can use it to make something like this. So here's what I made earlier. So this is just made using cardboard, kitchen roller paper or toilet roll, and paint and glue, all stuck together and you can create the most amazing 3D pictures. So if you look at it from the side as well, it's all really 3D and stands out. So that's gonna be a really, really nice thing to do with toilet rolls. Another really nice thing you can do with a sheet of cardboard is you can use some fabric that you might have around the house. So make sure you check with your mum and dad, make sure it's nothing valuable, or maybe you have some old clothes that you were going to throw away, so they can be great things to use. And you can use glue, scissors, cut them out to different shapes, and then you can make a really nice collage, something like this. Now I absolutely love the sea, so this is what I've done from under the sea with starfish and seahorses and lots of different animals as well, like my little whale over here. So you can use buttons to decorate it, you could use lots and lots of different kinds of materials as well and get as creative as you can. And again, it's a really nice way to use up textiles that you don't want anymore, which is like uh, fabrics you don't want anymore, and cardboard as well. So that can be a lovely thing to do. So I'm going to put that to one side. Another really nice thing you can make is if you're looking to give somebody a little present or you want to get someone flowers, why don't you make your own? So you can make a little flower pot. This is made using a yogurt pot and I stuck on lots of different fabrics to make it really bright and colourful. And then you can make flowers that are going to live forever. Well, not quite forever, but you know what I mean. And um, so these are made using sticks and fabric and I'll show you how to do them. So just really nice and colourful. You can make a little bouquet as well to give to someone like your grandparents or friends that you've missed or things like that. So all you need is scissors glue, some fabric, so you want nice long pieces, uh, a stick and an elastic band as well. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut out your fabrics, you want them quite long and then you're going to cut little slits into them. So here's ones I've done earlier as well, so you're going to cut them quite far down, uh, a bit more than halfway down the fabric. and. Be careful with your fingers as you're cutting, obviously. Don't want any injuries. So I've nearly finished this one now. Now, I like to do two different colors, but if you've got any brightly colored fabrics, it's whatever colors you kind of like and you think might look really good together as well. Okay, so once you've cut it all up, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get your stick. Then you're going to start wrapping your fabric around it. So right up as far as this left. fabric on. So again, I'm going to put it slightly lower down and have the centre 
a little bit higher up and again putting it upside down rolling it around now the more fabric you use the fuller your flower is going to be I'm going to roll it all the way around here now so there you go and before you put your elastic band on and your glue on as well make sure you're really happy with it so you can make it a little bit looser or a little bit tighter you're going to put quite a good bit of glue on the inside glue it shut and then you can use your elastic band to hold in place while the glue actually dries so there you go there's a little flower i made and you can have them lots of different colors lots of different designs if you want to do zigzags as well you could do that there you go, that's different ways to reuse sticks and reuse fabric. Uh, I'm just going to go through another couple of ideas, so things you might have at home as well. So here is some uh, wrappers from sweets or you could use newspaper or any kind of colourful material that you have at home. Get some scrap paper, so something that's left over, even if it's got writing on the back, that's always good, we like reusing. You can cut it up to different shapes and you can get as creative as you can with your designs. Try and make it 3D. So this is a little flower I did earlier as well. Use quite a lot of glue. You can draw out as well your different shapes and designs. You can use curry paper, uh, pencils or markers as well. Uh, and have lots of different shapes if you want to do a tree. So you could do the trunk and then you could use the sweet wrappers to actually do the leaves in it. Get creative, think about what kind of things you might do yourself and it can be a lot of fun to do as well um, when you're doing that. And you can work outside, if you've got a table outside, your parents might appreciate not having a mess in the kitchen, it can be a lovely thing to do as well. Um, other things you can make are using bottles. If you cut off the bottom of it, make sure you've got the top still on it, then you can paint this and decorate it as well. Get, some, get a grown up to help you make little holes in it and put string into it. And then you can plant, put in some stones and soil and you could plant something like a pea plant or you could plant a really nice small plant and hang it up and have it in your room. Really nice thing to do as well. It's something really useful to have at home, particularly if you're growing your own food plants. While there's still seedlings and they need to be inside, you can actually put them in here and then when they get too big, you can put them out in your garden or your patio or whatever. Really nice thing to do as well. Now, if you're feeling really adventurous, have a look and see, can you make something like a robot or get as big as you can, make a castle, make a, a woodland scene, anything at all that you want and have a look and see what materials that are in your recycle bin might be good to use as well. If you're using things like um, cans, food cans, just, there can be really sharp edges, so just make sure there's no sharp edges in anything that you're using, because you don't want to cut yourself as well. And if you need any help from grown-ups, do ask them. So get as creative as you can. So this one here was made using a tea box. Lots of different uh, plastics and packaging and things like that, um, and we just, really use your imagination, you use a lot of paint. So sometimes this might take you two days because build it first, then paint it is always a really good way to do it. So guys, I just want to thank you all so much for watching. Um, my name is Sarah Clear from the Rediscovery Centre and we're delighted to do this for Mead Libraries as well. And if you're making anything at home, do take pictures and send them to Mead Libraries social media. I know they'd love to see them and we would too. Thank you all very much. Bye.